dear students good afternoon i hope all of you are well so last time we were reading uh, from our gems english reader the beautiful story the song from heaven an aesthetic inspiring and of course beautiful story this is the song from heaven so we read up to page number 47 and uh, the last pair para yes it was franz graber the <coughs> organ builder organ mechanic actually he was also fell in love with the song with the notes of the songs and he inferred and extracted permission from uh, father moore to teach the same song to the people and children of his village so this is the first time the song and all the story is about song it reached beyond the village where it was born so fame started to spread and this is the first step which we are reading let's read after afterwards I have never heard this song before. Can I learn it? Asked the organ builder. My friends and neighbors would love to hear it. Franz Graber, Franz Graber agreed, and that's how the song took its first step outside the tiny village where it was born. The organ builder gathered the children of his village and taught them the song. they called it song from heaven and soon it became popular in several neighboring villages as well so from one village to another village and from that another village to several other villages to several other villages that's how the journey of this song was and the more people heard it the more they found a sort of oneness the sweeter they found the song and the wider the song spread it they called it song from heaven and soon it became popular in several neighboring villages as well why song from heaven i think you know it it was because this song <coughs> was not written and composed intentionally father more was merely writing down the happenings or the incidents which was really a kind of coincidence and which was really magical and uh, a significant one in his life he was writing the accounts of those things and nothing else but while writing all those things unknowingly he composed a poem which poem was later was later uh, admired by franz zaver graber and then the music teacher of the church and then it was again admired and uh, admired by uh, the organ builder who came from a different village so that is how from father more from father more to Franz Zaber Graber to another organ builder from different villages and from them several other villages the song spread it in time the song reached the lips of the most wonderful singers the treasured children of zilatral valley everyone agreed that the children carolin joseph andreas and emily sang like angels so beautifully they sang the song uh, so deeply the song touched the people who heard it that people thought these must have been some angels who are singing the song and that is the reason it is touching our very core so 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 intensely they were often called to sing at local events though little emily was so young that she could barely pronounce the words of the song 
their parents were glove makers. Every year in spring, the family travelled northward to Leipzig, sorry, to Leipzig, to sell their wares at the annual trade fairs. So they used to make some gloves and some other handicrafts, and those that they used to f sell in a neighbouring village, which was uh, miles away from their village, and the name of that village was Leipzig. And in that village there was a fair that was held every year. So it was the yearly fair and this is the chance where for, for what they were waiting because this is the time they earn most of their earnings. In the fair they used to sell those gloves in the fair. So many people from different places used to visit. They used to buy different things they, these people used to produce and that is how they used to earn a lot they used to gather sustenance for the whole year on that fair. That is why it was time again and they were visiting that village. Leipzig was a large, busy city and the children often felt lost and uncomfortable in the crowded place. That year, when they were feeling particularly homesick, Caroline Strasher suggested, I know what will lift our spirits. So as you know, if the village children, they visit a, uh, a city which is congested, where they will find a hubbub, a hurry, haste and clamour. These things will surely make those children who are coming from villages feeling awkward. That is the reason sometimes they used to feel alienated because they were miles away from their home and they were little children, they were not adults. So they used to think about their home, their usual play, their usual gatherings, churches and all these things. So one day, one such day, these children were feeling really some really homesick and they were trying to come out of that feeling, they were trying to overcome that feeling and uh, because they have to stay there, their fathers, this is the time when they earn most. So, uh, they were feeling homesick, they were feeling alienated, there was a nostalgic feeling oozing out of their heart, which made them so lonely, so solitary, so melancholic. Now, uh, Caroline was there, the little, girl and she suggested that I know the way we can lift our spirits. Let's sing. Yes, let's, agreed the others. The children stood in a corner of the street and started singing. Of course, they chose their favorite song, Song from Heaven. Soon people stopped and gathered around the children mesmerized by their melody, melodious voices and the beautiful words. So it was the symphony of the song, it was the very harmony of the notes that touched the very virtue of every single heart, that is uh, compassion, that is uh, goodwill and all these things. Where, well, If any person, if there is a place which is, uh, which is beautiful, where there is feelings for others, where there is a good will, and every single heart with a good will was touched by the symphony, by the all pervasive symphony of the song. And they were mesmerized, they were spellbound. How beautifully these children are singing! What a beautiful song! How deep are the words, lyrics! They were really mesmerized. They were hearing it, living all their walks. Once more, they cried each time the stressed children finished the song. So they, this was something new for them and they wanted to hear it again and again and there was numerous requests uh, for the children to sing the same song again and again and again. One elderly man in particular observed the children keenly so there was a man, an elderly man, 
standing in the middle of the crowd. That person was uh, hearing these uh, children very keenly because all others were mesmerized. They were only feeling that how uh, lucky we are that we can hear that kind of song. But here this person, there was something else which was going on inside the mind of that person. Now one elderly man particular, in particular observed the, the children keenly. When they had finished, he walked up to them. What an enchanting performance, something that uh, catches, your, catches your attention, that, conf uh, that imprisons your ca at attention. All your attention, all your uh, focus is caught by something that is called enchanting. Okay, uh, what voices? He said, shaking their heads, shaking their hands. Thank you, sir. I am the Director General of Music in the Kingdom of Saxony. So they were the, the place where this Leipzig, where this fair was held. Uh, this place was under the Kingdom of Saxony, within the border of Kingdom of Saxony. And there, this man who came to them and shook his hand and admired their performance, this man was... Uh, the Director General of Music in the Kingdom of Saxony. How lucky these children are. This is again there is blessings which is being showered from heaven. Because at first the song was uh, composed unintend un in unintendedly. Yes, of course, there was no intention for these people to uh, compose the song. And then what happened? It was composed it was loved, it became famous, and now those children who are spreading this news, the beautiful symphony of the song, these children are also blessed because they met by chance, by the arrangement of destiny, they met the Director General of Music in the Kingdom of Saxony. We have a concert, uh, sorry, we have a concert this evening. All of you must attend. I will talk to your parents, he said. So he said that the royal concert was being held and you are welcomed, you are invited, cordially invited in the concern, in the concert. We would love to, yes, that was, uh, uh, what should I say, uh, an unexpected uh, uh, blessings, which is called windfall, that was a windfall for these children. They could not even imagine that the director general of music from uh, the kingdom who, who is a royal per member okay they will appreciate admire their performance and moreover they will be invited by such a such an important person uh, to the to a royal concert that was like uh, their dream uh, came true it was crystallized for the first time in their life that evening the Strassers walked into, the, into a grand auditorium. It was filled with well-dressed gentlemen and ladies in fine gowns. They sat in a corner, enjoying the music. Then, as the last notes of the final song rang out, the Director General of Music walked onto the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, he said a short while ago, I had the privilege of listening to the finest voices that this land has ever known. I would like to invite them on stage to sing their beautiful song for Our Highness, who is no other than the King himself, the King and Queen of Saxony. Please come up, stressors. So these uh, children were invited uh, on the stage uh, to perform the song which they had sung numerous times, but, they, but, but this was something which was really very special. That was the first time they were singing. They were about to sing the song in the presence of the king and queen. This will give a momentum, an impetus to the song being famous all over the world. That will give, the, give a royal identity, a royal a consent to the song that this is something which uh, the king and the queen likes most. And it will help the song, this song, yes, of course, it helped this song become famous 
at a uh, at some uh, more rapid more rapidly it was becoming famous by and by but the royal patronage will uh, give will serve an impetus to the song being popular more rapidly see ladies and uh, okay the children turned crimson crimson means red blushing with embarrassment yes of course they could not even imagine that they they would see and uh, suddenly it happened the entire auditorium applauded encouraging them along don't look at those people little amelie whispered to her siblings we should just shut our eyes and imagine that we are at home singing to our friends so of course visibly they were nervous they were about to sing before the king and the queen and there were so many royal persons and noble persons they were sitting in the auditorium so they were really feeling a little bit hesitated anxious nervous right then it was amely who helped and told them every one of you you are getting nervous because you can watch these important people who are who have gathered here in large number so it is better that you uh, sing the song uh, keeping your eyes closed so that you don't get uh, uh, distracted by the presence of these royal persons and it worked the children nodded in agreement they began singing song from heaven and when they had finished you could have heard a pin drop means people were wrapped in attention they were caught in the beautiful symphony of the song and they as if the song had an enchanting power to grip to have a grip over the attention of all the people who were present all the spectators who were present uh, in that uh, very hall that very auditorium and that happened the stunned audience took a moment moment to recover from the spell of the song before they burst into a thousand thunderous applause everyone got to their feet giving the astonished children a standing ovation so these children also got a standing ovation from such an important crowd most of the important persons important officials noble persons uh, uh, famous uh, 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 those merchants the king and queen himself was there and every single person from the uh, audience they stood up to show their appreciation admiration and honor the children who sang this beautiful song and gave them enormous profound uh, pleasure that is the reason these people were uh, showing their gratitude towards these uh, young children the children nodded in agreement they began singing song from heaven and when they had finished you could have heard a pain drop it is written there yes people were so mesmerized that they could not even think that we should uh, uh, show them our admiration once the song has once the performance has finished that is why it is written as if they were spellbound they were wonderstruck and it took a little bit time for these people to come to their senses and when they came to their senses they burst out into thunderous applause just then a uniformed man walked up to the children with a message the king and queen of saxony visited to speak to them what a moving song the king and the queen of sorry the queen said after the children had cut seed before her it bowed before her we have never heard it before joseph cleared his throat and replied that it was a folk song well you must sing it for us again said the king come to the palace and sing it at the special christmas service so that christmas service on that very particular year had been really special for these children that was a special day of course but for these children it became more special because they were invited by the king and queen himself to perform at the royal court this is uh, actually the dream of these performers who were there besides these children also they dream to sing one day at the court of uh, the king or queen that opportunity came so easily and so prematurely uh, for these young children that they could not even believe it 
this is how in the Christmas of 1832 the song traveled to the royal section court chapel and enchanted the entire congregation. Congregation means the gathering of the pious people. From there on the song traveled around the world capturing people's hearts wherever it went. Even through, even though the pain and despair of World War I that broke out in 1914 Song from Heaven spread its magic. On 25th December 1914, the very year when the World War broke out, English and German troops decided to call a Christmas truce. Soldiers of both armies sang this carol simultaneously. These are the same soldiers on the previous day. They were busy. They were desperate to take each other's lives. But today, their hearts are knitted with one passion, that is created by the lyrics of this song, the song from heaven. It was the one carol that both the sides knew, connecting them in the midst of enmity and turmoil. The song continues to, continues to spread its joy and peace even today. This simple song from a tiny village in Austria now resonates, means reverberated, echoed or reverberates or echoes in the hearts of millions of people every Christmas. And then some lines are there written, Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is, br all is bright. Round young virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. These are the very opening stranza of that fascinating song, the song from heaven. That is how our those things actually which are so common to us sometimes, they stands for something ideal. They stands for some a particular idea, they become an icon. And that is how, that is the same thing with Jesus too. He was born with a with an insignificant parents. The parents were not known by so many people, but Jesus, he became known to every single living soul on this earth. That is his success. And that uh, tells, uh, that actually tells us that it doesn't matter where you have born, it doesn't matter how much impediments you have surrounding you, it doesn't matter uh, how far uh, or how much you lack regarding a particular job or any particular ambition. If you are successful or failure, a failure person or a successful person, whichever the